Hey, what's up everyone? I'm back and today's episode is tremendously bespoke, but I think a lot of people will really dig what's coming out of this. So here's the problem. So we need to get a 30 second spot, we need to blade it up and put it into Adobe Premiere to reframe it. And uh, you know what, it's easy showing you. So let's do this. So we're gonna do it the old way. We've received a finished spot that hasn't got an EDL, hasn't got anything, it is the absolute just end spot here. And this is Mercedes spot that I've been working on on these tutorials. So how do I do it? If I put a reframe on this now, it'll keyframe between each of the cuts and it will look absolutely mental. So what you have to do is that you have to go through the spots, um, find the cuts, back we go, back we go, there it is, Apple K, and you keep blading that all the way through. It's pretty groovy if there's just one, you've got time, you're bored, that's no worries. But you know what, if you've got loads to do, how do you get scene detection? Well, that's super easy, Craig. All you need to do is go over to Resolve, free version, go to Media Pool, find the spots, do um, scene cut detection, do auto detection, um, let the industry standards kick butt machine to do it, and you go, bosh, happy days, that looks great, add cuts to media pool, um, change it, close this down, close it down, and all I need to do now is literally grab these files and make a sequence from it. So you go, okay, well, this is getting pretty cool, so I'll call it Coolio, and if I go to my edit, oh my god, how good's that? It's literally gone and done it. Best thing in the world. Is it? Is it? Pretty cool, it's doing it. So now what we want to do is go File, Export, XML, and I'll go to my desktop, and I'll call it Coolio Resolve, how original. Do that, and ah, uh, come here you. I don't want to go to there, I want to go to my desktop. You crazy thing. So, if I now go back over to Premiere, I import my Resolve, um, it's brought in my timeline, I open it up, it's got all the cuts. Oh, uh, what? It's brought the cuts in, but even though the timecode is a um, MP4, I get that. I've tried this with um, ProRes, the timecode, I've done everything. You'd need some extrapolation of the XML to do it. Long story short, she ain't doing it that way. So, how do you do it? Drum roll, please. So, we're back to Python. Now, I blame Aaron Corbett on this, because Aaron brought me into the Python world a couple of years back, and I've never looked back. So, what this tremendously amazing developer, who I have to find his name, it's in there somewhere, has made is a Python script, and you can automate this as much as possible, but how it works is quite cool. It's using detection from OpenCV and also a bit of FFmpeg, and it gives you options to come through to do scene detect and be able to save it out to individual files. There is a bucket load of other cool stuff in here, and I might actually just do a whole video on this, but this is kind of the, the show. The split video option is what we wanna look at. Now, if I come over to my command, and what it is, it's looking for the input file. Anyone that's done a bit of FFmpeg will get this. It's, um, I've brew installed it. It's come down, um, I'm running this through the command line. You can run it through Python. You can do a lot more. I am doing the super rudimentary way of doing this. So um, scene detect, input file, output where this is going to. So I'll call this um, Coolio2. Um, detection rate, this is where the threshold gets interesting. So the threshold now is at 30. Now I've done from one, I've done to 100. It really depends on the footage and the detection threshold works with that as well. And I'm asking, pff, what have I done? Come over here, you. Oh, he's had too much to drink. I want to name this to Coolio. Okay, so Coolio 2. And then it's going to do the command of split video. So if I hit the go button, this is now going to go grab that file, it's going to analyze it, it's going to look for um, certain uh, function of it. If you throw a ProRes at it, it won't work. It has to be an MP4 at this stage. You can use FFmpeg to retranscode out to other formats, but you have to feed an MP4 at this stage that I've seen. Correct me if I'm wrong, okay? Correct me if I'm wrong. So, let's go have a quick look over here and jump into my folders where it's gone into my roots. And we should see the Coolio 2. Shiver me whiskers, it's dropped it all in there. 
let's celebrate, jump up and down and think it's the best thing in the world. Well, we're not out of the woods yet. So, back to our lovely friend at Premiere. Grab all this, delete this out, it means nothing to me. It is dead to me. Grab the folder. Now, this is a key part here. You need the folder to come in. If you start dragging individual clips over, you're gonna get yourself into a world of pain. Take the folder and drag it over. So, let's have a quick look. Oh my goodness, it's brought in the whole thing and it's all great. Let me mute this, this uh, audio out again. So, this content is tremendously graded, quite similar to it. So the detector had a really hard time doing it. This is not 100% bulletproof. And what I mean by that is that if I go through here, come to my first cut, and I'll go, ah, so it's actually bleeding one frame over. So if I throw a retime on this, it will have a problem. So I still have to come through and just check my homework by Apple King that. So that's the right one. That's fine. That cut doesn't matter about it. Um, what um, the reframe will look at are the cuts. But if these are similar, it won't do a crazy keyframe. That one is perfect. That one is wrong. Apple K. That one is wrong. Apple K. Go back. That one's fine. That one's wrong. So, yeah, you're kind of going, well, Craig, you lunatic. You could have just gone and um, done this anyway. It's like, sure, great idea. But I tell you what, um, I would prefer to be skipping to cuts and not all of them being wrong than actually um, having to go and recut this and try to find the cut. And if I'm doing music videos, that would absolutely do my, my head in, having to go through and doing three, four, five hundred cuts and multiples of it. Now, it's up to you to figure out the threshold of this and play with the threshold. That's the fun part. So um, here we go. <laughs> Ironically, it's nearly every cut. Ugh, how much fun. What I'm here to show you is this is a process that is pretty good. And there's a lot to be played around with. And I'm willing people to see what needs to be done to get your thresholds right, different footage, and as you see, I'm probably 50-50 on this. Now, this is god-awful MP4. GOP structure editing is not its um, favorite suit. But what I want to show you is that there is an option for this. So here should be the end tag. Here's a cut there that's working. And there we go. And there's your cut. So now, from that, you take this, right-click, and you reframe your sequence. Luckily, you only do it once, okay? So there's the one-to-one. -one. That will make the one-to-one. -one. Um, there's the 916. There's 916. And you're off to the races. Now, from this, I'm going to do an offloaded video of how you can take those 916s as one-by-ones and then do auto-adaptations for different languages and different things through Data Clay. Now, if you haven't seen Data Clay, it's an amazing piece of kit. That's going to be the next video coming out the gate soon. So... All I want to show you guys is if you've got Python, um, it's not tremendously heavy scripting, the documentation is very cool, and this gets you halfway there. So if you're doing music videos of 300 cuts, this is brilliant. If you're doing loads of commercials, I would run the threshold once or twice just to see how you're getting there, then you might need to blade it to make it better. But apart from that, this is the video of Python screen or Pi screen detect with a little bit of um, uh, Premiere Pro and reframing. Anyway, guys, I wish you all a fantastic 2020. And as always, look after yourself.